I don't know if you can be a member of one of the biggest bands of all time and be underrated. I would point you to the Fleetwood Mac Greatest Hits album because half the songs on the Greatest Hits album are Christine songs and the other half are Stevie or Lindsay songs. That's really important. I'm Alan Light. I'm a music journalist and an author. Christine McVie, then Christine Perfect, was in a blues band called Chicken Shack. Meets John McVie. After a whirlwind romance, they are married. She becomes Christine McVie, and then she and John are in Fleetwood Mac together. Christine really becomes the central transitional figure between thinking about Fleetwood Mac as a blues band and what they become more of a sort of pop rock band. They pretty quickly make the album that's just titled Fleetwood Mac. There were four singles from that album. Three of them were Christine McVie songs. Over My Head, Warm Ways, and Say You Love Me propelled this album into massive worldwide success. There is no album with a backstory like the album that becomes Rumors. And as much as you want to reduce it to it's Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham, it is Christine McVie in the middle of her own tension who's actually putting the most songs on the album. You have Don't Stop offering this sense of optimism, this sense of a future. You Make Love and Fun is kind of the funkiest song. Songbird, in some ways, is the signature Christine McVie song, certainly the signature ballad. So together, these songs that are solely Christine McVie compositions really are this enormous part of what Rumors adds up to. There's a warmth and an intimacy to the songs that Christine McVie wrote that not only distinguish her from what her bandmates were doing, but distinguish her from what other songwriters were doing. There was Carole King, there was Joni Mitchell, there were some of the greatest writers of all time who were women and singer-songwriters. What there really wasn't were women who were singers and songwriters in bands. And I think that's a thing that's really important I think that, you know, we didn't give her the, the spotlight and the credit that's due. It's not a legacy that got, gets called out that much. They'll talk about the band, they'll talk about Stevie, there are guitar players who will talk about Lindsay. You don't hear people saying that they took their inspiration from Christine McVie as directly. But if you listen to what they're doing, what they're actually doing is drawing from what she did. The, the thing that's astonishing about Fleetwood Mac and about Christine McVie compositions is the continuing popularity and legacy that it has for young listeners. Young people, they want to be near it. They just want to have it. There's just a vibe, an aesthetic, an aura that it retains that is very different from all of its contemporaries. Every big band has fans, but there is a special connection. And seeing this object that came close to Christine, I think in the way that these things do, in the sort of poetry of it, brings you closer to somebody who didn't always let people in as much. And in that way, I think it feels a little more special to get that sort of intimacy. I just think who Christine was, was that generous and open of a figure. So for an auction like this, the fact that it is charity driven seems really consistent with who Christine was. I think the chance to sort of get close to her is sort of the special draw for what these items would bring.